Well, in this uh, challenging media environment, it may be helpful to have a niche. And our next guest holds a 16-title publishing company in that luxury magazine market. So here to tell us how his area of the media world is performing, we're joined by Jason Bin, the founder and CEO of Niche Media. Thanks so much for, for joining us Thanks this for morning. Me. So how is luxury faring? Because we hear so often about the pullback in the U.S. market and spending on luxury goods. What's happening in your line of work? In our line of work, it's just integrating more with the consumers. I think the advertisers, the luxury sector, want to be more connected to the buyers, um, the people who could afford these luxury goods. And uh, what we do, which is unique, is we have these local city-specific magazines. Mm -hmm. So as much as we want to touch as many people as possible, we really focus on niche, which is what the company stands for. So does that sort of like decentralize in some ways ad sales? Is there, are there different advertisers in Vegas versus Michigan versus New York? Uh, what we try to do is pretty much 50% of our business comes from the national business sector. So if you look at some of these major luxury brands, seven or eight percent, seven or eight of our titles are being driven by, you know, their sales. So. Mm -hmm you know, Louis Vuitton or Gucci in our markets, they're probably doing 30, 50, 60 percent of the business in our markets. So it makes us become more scrappy, if you want to say that, on ground mm -hmm. with events and marketing and PR for those brands. But it definitely engages the community because the styles and sensibilities in every city are different. Right. So our job is to kind of get into that. So what are you seeing in terms of a comeback on ad spending? We had heard, you know, ad sales down 30 percent, down 15 percent. How overdone is that? How accurate is that? The number changes, uh, but there is obviously some uh, consumer confidence, I believe, and especially the last few weeks, I believe, is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, the financial security at some point is uh, turning more and more in a positive direction. But again, the advertising is going to be the last part of uh, that piece of the pie when advertisers really want to engage and they feel that they really are secure and stable in marketing and branding their business. Mm -hmm. Now your uh, average income of your readership, people make $250,000 a year, they've got at least a million bucks in the bank. They're high income, high net worth individuals because right. it just goes up from there. How do you strike uh, an appropriate tone in this environment right now? I think it's about engaging those people more and more and you do it through involving them more in your business. Unlike a traditional company in media, which relies on newsstands and subscriptions, mm -hmm. where sometimes the average income is 62000 or 80000 or peaks at times at $90,000 uh, a year in, in salary, what we try to do is make sure, because the advertisers want to know, that not only do the people make the money, they live in the money and have the money. And that's what we've done. So a cost per thousand in a mm -hmm. traditional form of how many people it takes, you know, how much money it takes to reach a thousand people, to us CPM is more about cost per mind. So does that mean you have more events, you have more one-on-one -on -one sessions in, yes. in terms of connecting? Yes, it's, it's more events, it's, it, it's, it's connecting more to those consumers, it's, it's creating this local content so uh, that really speaks you know, with the people at the, you know, in that community, not at them. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to touch a lot of people. We are, but we're doing it in these niche outlets, these niche markets. So we do get group buys from major of the national brands, but then a lot of it is connecting with the owner-operator businesses that might not have stores in more than one city.